scheduled a home and home for 2025, 2026. Now, before we get into uh, the debate over why it has to be so far away, let's discuss how cool this could possibly be, right? These two teams have never played each other. You've got Lane Kiffin at Ole Miss, former USC head coach, former USC offensive coordinator under Pete Carroll. And, and USC, from their college football account today, their official account, shared out and said, hey, at Lane Kiffin. Like, I love when stuff like that pops up. It is, or no, they said, sup, Lane Kiffin. I love this kind of stuff, right? There is obviously a storyline here. The two teams have never played. I, the last time the USC did a home-and-home home with an SEC team, they played Arkansas. And when they traveled to Fayetteville, they beat them 70-17. to 17. Now, this was during the Pete Carroll heyday and all that. Uh, I think that the reason that USC is willing to schedule somebody like Ole Miss in a home-and-home home is because they don't view them as a threat. They don't at all. I would venture to say that Lane Kiffin, at, if, if he is still the coach, obviously he is going into his first season in 2020. In five years, he could be completely gone. He could be out of here. He could have a bigger job. He could, I mean, any number of things. But I think there is a very realistic chance that he has got them rolling in close to the same way that Hugh Freeze did. And I don't know about the recruiting stuff, anything like that. I'm just, just throwing it out there. When Hugh Freeze had it rolling, Ole Miss was a really good football team. They can get guys. So, I think that it, there's a chance that we could see a good Ole Miss squad going up against a USC team that who knows where this team is going to be. They, everybody thought they were going to fire their coach last year. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, I think this could end up being a really good series. What say you, Chris? It's five years from now. We have no idea what these teams are going to look like then. It doesn't matter. They, USC could be back to old school USC kicking people's ass and winning the Pac-12 year in and year out. And Ole Miss, there's no telling where they could be in the realm of the rebuild. If Lane is incredible in his first four seasons, he could jump to a big boy job, yeah. big, big, big boy job easily by then. And then this is all pointless and moot. I hate that they do these things so far out because we don't know where these teams are going to look at that point in time. Yeah. Like well, you're right. If you were to do this in two years, then you get Ole Miss two years to to get into a rebuild and to change the way they look and to do some other things. And then uh USC I would assume is going to look a little bit like they look now. If they're going downward, they're not going to go down much more than they already are because they're still USC and still going to be able to get the best talent in California. Yes. Um and and if they make a coaching change or things happen and clay helton kind of turns the corner then then they could be on the upward swing but either way i think when they play if lane is still there it's going to be a fun and great matchup problem is is we're we're projecting a lot for four years five years down the road yeah no you're right about that tyrone on facebook said notre dame will kick usc's ass again it probably this year i mean we'll see i don't know they didn't beat their ass last year they've been about three points uh, Matt on YouTube has a lot to say about this. First, he said, I missed football so bad this weekend. I went to the UPS store just to boo the Packers. So, of course, we love that. We love that one. OB Matt, again, I would love to see those SoCal boys come down to the humidity in Mississippi. Uh, 100%. I mean, that's, a, that's one of the advantages that Ole Miss will actually have, depending upon when they actually schedule the game. Uh, and then on top of that, Matt said, Lane Kiffin will probably have Ole Miss under some investigation by then. And then McKinnon on Facebook said, can we just all agree USC is consistently the most overrated team going into every season? I, don't, I wouldn't say every season. Um, last year, I mean, they outplayed expectations. I mean, they went 8-4. Yeah. They their, were a game their, out of Their uh, expectations were pretty low last year. Yeah. I don't know that they were overrated by anybody. No. Now, now, a lot of the time, for sure, Ben jumped in and said Texas is. Yeah, probably. Yes. That that is probably well. Last year we will all unanimously agree Nebraska was because they had like <laughs> the third best odds to win the national championship, and I believe they might have sniffed out four wins. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. That's a hundred percent. So correct. all of these other people get swept under the rug until somebody settles the hell down about Nebraska. I people seem to really think that Nebraska is going to be 
pretty decent again they, this year. Because they believe in magic. But their schedule is magic. tough, man. I, I, Nebraska could easily be a team that goes 6-0 and to start with and then loses the last six games. That's how difficult that schedule is. What, just off the top of your head, like USC Ole Miss, fun, weird matchup. Yeah. Um, oh, Lane Stapp Gaming said, uh, I'm an Ole Miss fan. I cannot wait for this. I think Ole Miss at this point is in rebuild mode, but USC yep. is a lot better. Uh, but Kiffin may know what he's doing since uh, Kiffin came from FAU. Um, McKinnon said, fair point. And then, uh, well, com- coming from FAU last season. Uh, yeah, I mean, Kiffin did well at FAU. Really well. He's I mean, done he- well everywhere he's gone except USC. He, he did Even fine then, there. Yeah. Let's look back. He just didn't meet their standards of competing for a national championship and winning 10 games every year. Correct. Correct. So, uh, off the top of your head, what would be a weird, fun matchup? And I know I'm putting you on the spot, and I apologize. It just popped into my head. But what would be one like a USC Ole Miss that would be off the wall, kind of fun to see? I mean, it's basically the same contrast of you're taking Pretty Boy California and you're bringing it to Pretty Boy Mississippi, okay? Which pretty different and Pretty now, are, Boy. Are frat you going guys, UCLA uh, and, and Mississippi yeah. State or no? UCLA is not Cowtown, LA. Come on. <laughs> Come on. UCLA no. is still damn pretty boy UCLA. No, you're right. Um, you're right. I don't I don't know. It would it would be some contrasting thing like that where these two are basically you know, you've got two schools that are I mean, I think outside of the winning, take the winning record, the the stereotypes about USC are probably more closely aligned with the stereotypes in the SEC with Ole Miss. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that. They take records away, take how good they've been at different things away, because that has to do with money and the size of your school and your fan base. That's a totally different thing. But I'm going to bet that USC fans go to a lot of football games and flip-flops and khaki shorts oh, and but, button-up T-shirts. So, <laughs> Tyrone said Idaho State versus Alabama. Like, well, that's on, kind of the same team versus the same team. Yeah. Let's, well, uh, and that's not really true. Al- Alabama's not that team. Michael anymore. said, I'd love to see Texas versus Texas A&M. So, and I, he's an A&M that's fan. the game I want. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the styles anymore. All the fans in the world want this game, and the administration wants nothing to do with it. I think, like, Texas A&M, um, God, who would, I mean, See, there's nothing fun for Texas A&M. Like, at Washington State and Mississippi State, like, it, Michael Leach jumped to the same school just in the SEC. Like, Yeah, that didn't really change doesn't anything. Doesn't change anything, but that would be fun to watch, I think. Um, Washington and Tennessee, that what, could be what fun. What needs to happen is the little school has to have gotten the new good coach. Yeah. And the big school has to be on the downside. Or else you don't, because Washington State, Mississippi State, not close. Not close. I like Rolovich, love Rolovich, think a lot about him, but the talent gap between Washington State and Mississippi State ain't close. In the trenches, Washington State's gonna get murdered. Oh, absolutely. They can't hang. You you would need you would need the big coach to leave the big school. You would need Nick Saban to leave and to go coach at Iowa State and then Iowa State Alabama play. Yeah. Like that's like that's what you're talking about here. You're talking about the coach that left the big school and for whatever his reasons is, has landed in the little school and is trying to get the little school back and the big school's never reached its old potential and now they're playing. That's the contrast I'm trying to find. That's yeah. really hard to find. No, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. But I, that's that's the story. You're looking, I mean, Lockley in Alabama, maybe if Saban ever left and Alabama kind of started going through their lulls. I, I of, think the matchup, like everybody replace, in the early 2010s, everybody wanted Oregon and Alabama. I think that'd be a really fun matchup right now to have a home and home. Like, put right, Alabama right. in Eugene, bring Oregon down to Tuscaloosa. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, Matt said Alabama versus the Cleveland Browns. Uh, let's see. Tyrone, of course, is laughing here. Uh, ben said Texas is AD refuses. And Mike said, Ben, because they are afraid to get that ass kicked, I'd love to see a Power uh, 5 hey, Texas I, I I'll tell you this. A&M's athletic department and president and administration's pretty hell-bent on that never happening again either. That, 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 is, that is a rivalry that went too far. Yes. And they, I, as much as I want to see those teams play, because I do think they're pretty equal footing right now, um, I, I, 
I think that hatred might be too bad to where it's just not worth it. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I agree. Uh, Lane Stapp Gaming said, ever since Hugh Freeze left, Ole Miss has struggled. Well, truth yeah, well, is, yeah. I mean, it, they've been under NCAA because probation. They, like, because they replaced Hugh Freeze with Matt Luke. Yeah. And on okay. top of that, they've, been, they've they, had NCAA sanctions put on them. And I mean, they, had, they, they couldn't recruit the way they normally would. They couldn't get the scholarship athletes because they didn't have the scholarships. It's tough. So, yeah. Yeah. It's it's really tough. You you cannot miss. Uh, Tyrone said Alabama cannot beat an NFL team. A hundred percent. We know. Well, that. no, no, no college team could ever do that. Yeah. Matt's just drunk already at work. <laughs> he didn't do a lot. I love it. I love it. All right, let's uh, let's dive into the next topic here. Um, next one here: California and New. 